Hey, what's up guys? This is going to be my live reaction for Bleach chapter 636 and also I'm going to be having like this thing where, you know, you can see the manga also because I feel like this would help a lot more because, you know, I was talking a lot about what was going on in the last live reaction and, you know, you guys weren't able to see that. So, might as well do this if Taite Kubo sues me. Oh well. So we got the first me uh, page is the swelling from a nightmare or despair. So essentially we're continuing off of where the chapter left off, which I assume so. And there's Perninda and it's still expanding, I guess. The head became huge. What's that? It doesn't look useful for fighting. There must be a reason. It's kind of creepy, you say. Okay, well, yeah, that's definitely definitely on the creepy level. I mean, it, and I like how we get a better view of Kenpachi's arm that got slashed. And it just, it's weird because with Yorichi, it kind of got, like, twisted and, like, fucked. But somehow when Perninda attack or counterattack Zoraki on his attack, it wasn't exactly the same ability. And hey, look, Ikaku and Nemu and Yumashika, they're here, which was weird because they didn't appear in the last chapter, and I didn't mention this in the live reaction or the review because I actually didn't even notice until I, because I, I was rereading the other chapters before. I was like, oh, they're with us. So, Ikaku's there, like, we lost the chance to jump in, idiot. We don't have to jump in. If we do something wrong, they're all get mad at us, and that move's just there, I agree, you know, saying, I have no thoughts, it's weird that you voice your opinion, is it, my Yuri son always orders me not to move until he calls me, I feel like that might be foreshadowing, maybe with this battle, maybe we'll see Nemu's uh, Zanpak Toe. I think she has a Zanpak Toe. a loyal stare comes from behind the two captains, I think that's talking about Nemu. I don't think Mayuri Sama is struggling so much against the enemy that he will need to call me. So yeah, it also reinforces the fact that this enemy doesn't like, you know, I want to see like how one Stern Raider compares to two captains and when the two captains are on the higher echelon of the captains, be you know, the strongness of the captains, I guess. And it's the same for C Captain Zaraki too. Sensitive Monster is the title. So more talking about Perninda, maybe. So next page, and Zaraki's arm is getting Yuroichi'd. Okay, what the fuck? No! No! What the fuck? Yo! Zoraki just ripped his arm off, I think. And... Oh, really? His right, like, Zoraki's right arm is gone. It, like, it's on his other arm. Like, he has it holding it. He had to rip it off. It was just... Oh, what the fuck? He had to put his arm down to grab the sword because it was still gripping it that hard, I guess. Oh, and there's still fingers on it. What the fuck? And his arm is literally... <sighs> Damn. Damn. And Zaraki just got fucked and he has like... He, he looks like nothing just happened. He folded it up so much that it turned into a pool of blood. How does that work? Oh, that's quite nice. Okay, so I like how they described the attack. They said it's folding. So I guess that's more showing what I guess the power is. Oh, that's quite nice. It was a good idea to rip off its right arm away. Good job, Captain Zoraki. If you hadn't doing the decision on that spot, now you'd be turned into a sunny and two-slip monster of meatballs. So it's probably like, at the, you know, he slashed his arm last chapter, and then that caused the compulse attack to happen. I'm not, sh I'm not sure whether you're praising me or provoking me. Oh my god, what do you think? Whatever, what is his power? Fantastic dialogue between Mayuri and Zarahi, as always, you know. As always, I don't understand if you're asking me or just talking to yourself, but either way, I don't know either. What I can say now is that it's better not to get close to it, definitely, which kind of sucks 
for Zoraki because he's much more of a close range fighter, but I feel like Muriuri might play a more pinnacle role in this battle, at least while the cloak is on Perninda, and they know they don't know their powers. And so because Mayuri can probably do some ranged attack, you know, with his Bankai or even Shikai. Namu, the up in his, tie up his arm and stop the blood loss. Don't kid me. How can we slash it up if we don't get close? See, Zaraki's just going again, you know, how can we slash it up? But Mayuri's going to come in right here. Uh, another question, slashing is not the only way to fight. I will explain a way to do it without getting... Sorry, but, so Mayuri's in a thinking process right now, I was just talking to myself, okay, and Zaraki, no, Zaraki, I'm, and Zaraki just goes, I was talking to myself, and Mayuri's just like, hey, Zaraki, if I don't understand his power, I'll just cut him in half before he gets me, and Mayuri gets his Zanpak toe out, and Zaraki gets a... Clean hit on Perninda, or Perninda is, like, holding... Oh, yeah, okay, so the cl the cloak... Oh, my God, no. What? Zaraki has no legs, I think. Like, oh, my God, what's gonna happen? Yep. Yeah. Yup. Wait a second. Zaraki... Okay, no, he didn't lose his legs. I thought they were just getting twisted. But he just got stabbed by Mayuri's Zanpakuto, Kurotsuchi, as expected, and just stopping the limbs, the other bones will break. Ashigo Soji Jizo, Fear Factor 4. S but you... As expected, and just stopping the limbs, the other bones will break. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on, like, exactly, like, if Mayuri did that, like, just to kill Kampachi, or, like, he's trying to stop, like, what's going on, which I'm assuming that's what's happening. Cover your ears, please, you'll go deaf in four seconds. Well, then, he's pulling out his Zanpak toe, and aesthetic is kicking in more important than this guy's brute strength may still come. Okay, so he's pretty much just sedating Zoraki because Zoraki's gonna go get himself fucking killed uh, by Perninda. Being turned into meatballs here would have <laughs> would be a bit of an inconvenience, which yes, because we need Zoraki. And also that anesthetic... And also that anesthetic is working means naturally your body can be cut up to. In other words, your nerves... You're using your own nerves to infiltrate the enemy's body and forcibly control their movements. Okay, that make that makes sense because it goes with the compulsory. You know, it, the cells go in and then it's it, very compulsive with with the movements by folding and twisting. I saw it coming. You know, I hear that Quincy. So Myuri, very props to Myuri. You know, smart motherfucker right here. I hear that the Quincy can pump Reishi into the blood vessels and make use of the power for himself. So he's talking about blue vein and stuff like that. If so, then it's no surprise that other beings can be can take and manipulate Reishi as well. But well, whatever the process is, if the body is cut apart, okay. So I, they're also coming back to Perninda, and it looks like it's just going crazy right now. So it adds to the compulsive thing. No need to be afraid of it. So, Mayuri has some shit going out from his arm, Pak Toe, and it's attacking Pernina, and Pernina's eye starting to, like, there's some threads coming from it, and then there's some threads coming from behind Pernina. Does it hurt? The accurate hardship of having your nerves exposed? I'm extremely interested in your power, and I think I'll have my time to and explore this slowly. What shall I do? I have tons of drugs that will work on the nerves. And it finally starts to melt. What astonishing true form will be. Okay. So we have like, even, is that the last page? Yeah, that's the last page. So, so it, I like how Kubo would describe it as melting. I feel that it's more poetic in a sense like, it's, you know, I'm melting. And it's just gonna like, have someone underneath it. I mean, I hope, like, we get somebody underneath it. Like, I don't want it to just be like this fucked up thing underneath it. Because that's what looks from from here, but you and in the last panel, like everything starts to rip. So I think next, you know, chapter we are gonna get a, a you know confirmation of what Pernin's appearance is. 
I mean, kind of sucks is that we ended on, like, the literally kind of same point, you know, we thought we were going to see Pernin's face. But we did get the fact that my or Zaraki is right now going to be out of the fight because he's sedated. So that could maybe save Zaraki for fighting other people, which I would love to see a Harold Val Valkyrie versus... Um, Zaraki fight, I think that would just be epic because they're just two probably brutes. I don't know about Harold Valkyrie, but you know, they just both look like brutes. And also, I would like to see a Zaraki versus Yuha, but you know, probably won't happen. Um, so this was a pretty cool chapter, and I'll have my review up later today. I stay up for this one too, it's like 6 a.m., so I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.